Hello. This lecture will cover pages 27 through 36 of my lecture notes. So uh, please print those pages out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on binary codes and parity. Uh, we're going to start on page number um, 27, binary codes. We're going to discuss two binary codes, the BCD code and a gray code. Binary coded decimal code is called the BCD code, and it's a 4-bit code we're going to look at in a minute. But computers force us to use binary numbers, but uh, we as human beings would like to use decimal numbers, so we compromise with the BCD code. BCD combines features of both binary and decimal. Before I show you examples of the BCD code, I want to mention the difference between encoding and decoding a number. If you take a number and you put it in a coded format. It's called encoding. If you take that coded number and if you understand the intelligence behind what got it to the code through the encoding process, you can use that intelligence to decode it back to the original number. Um, Julius Caesar used that years ago centuries ago um, to get messages to the battlefield he took the number the letter A and B and C and D and E and F and he gave them a uh, a number sequence A was a 1, 2 was a B, 3 was a C, 4 was a D, E5 and F6 and if he wanted to send messages to his generals like attack or whatever um, he would just add a certain number that would be the intelligence behind that the generals would have to know. So if he wanted to send the number A, or the letter A, he wouldn't send an A. Uh, he would add four to it, for instance. And he would add a, he would send a one, two, three, four. He'd send an E. And he'd do that for every letter in the word. And then when the generals got the message, the encoded message, they would have to decode it to get it back to the original letter. And if they understood they subtracted 4, they'd be able to take it back to the A. So it gives you a quick example of one form of encoding a number and then decoding the number to get it back to um, the original, original number. Um, what I'd like to do is take a look at the BCD code now. Um, in particular, uh, binary coded decimal was also referred to as the 8421 code because each of the um, positions represent a power of 2. The first position is a 1, the second position is a 2, third position is a 3, and the fourth position is a 8. So uh, it's referred to as the 8421 code. There's, there's many different codes. There's an 8441 code, believe it or not. There's an 8411 uh, code. There's an 88 Two one code, but the eight four two one code is the most popular BCD code. So we just refer to it as BCD. When you hear somebody referring to BCD code, they're talking about this particular code. And if you take a look, the way it works is, I um, have a little table here. We have a decimal column, a hex column, a binary column, and a BCD code column. Notice that the BCD code starts at zero 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 and it progresses up to a nine, a one zero zero one. Well, after nine. You go to 10. Well, 10 is two digits, so you'd have to you'd have to break the uh, into two separate nibbles when you get to 10. In other words, 10 is not applicable. There's no there's no BCD code for 10 or 11 or 12 or 13 or 14 or 15. They're not applicable. The only codes in the BCD code that are available are 0000, 000 through 1001, which is 9. Um, the 10 through 15 are invalid. So let's take a look here at some BCD codes and how easy it is to use it. The number 10, for instance, number 9. If you go to 9, no problem. There's the group, straight binary. That's a 9 in a BCD code. If you go to 10, however, there's no 1010 in BCD. You have to take the 0 and form a binary coded decimal for it, the BCD code for 0000, zero, 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 and the binary code for 1 is a 0001. Zero, 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 Notice we have two nibbles. 
It's binary within each nibble, but it's decimal from decimal representation in, in, in terms of the groups. That's a compromise. Uh, let's take the number 42 in base 10. And I don't want to take that to base 2. I'm going to find what that is in binary coded decimal. You have to be careful what I'm asking for here. The 4 is a 0, 1, 0, 0. And the 2 is a 0, 0, 1, 0. Notice I'm putting a space in here. Always, always put spaces between the nibbles when you're forming a byte. Uh, it's just easier to read and it's more professionally written that way. So I'm showing the 4 as in that group and I'm showing the 2 in its separate group. Uh, keep in mind that 1001, 1001 here is the largest BCD code. And then you have to break out different groups. Um, my example here on page 29, I have an example to look at here, a couple examples. The BCD code expresses each decimal digit by its 4-bit binary equivalent within the group. So 429, there's your 4, there's your 2, and there's your 9 in BCD. That's not straight binary. That's binary coded decimal. What about your 8,963? Requires 1, 2, 3, 4. There's four groups there. 1, 2, 3, 4. Your 8, there's your 8. Your 9, there's your 9. Your 6, there's your 6. And your 3, there's your 3. I'm not going to try to trick you and try to put in uh, 8, 3, Charlie 2. Because you're not going to be able to convert that to BCD. That Charlie's an app. So I'm, I'm not going to try to throw you like that on an exam. I'll give you, just make sure you can understand how to break it the decimal numbers down to BCD this way. Um, be careful with BCD versus binary. If you're taking a look here, we have a 137. Let me write this down, it'll be easier to see. You have your 137. That's in base, or yeah, 137 in base 10. And you convert that out. Um, that has to have a weight of 128 has to have a weight of 8, has to have a weight of 1. So if you take a weight of 1, 8, and 128, that's 128, you're going to get your 137 in base 10. That's a straight binary number. But if I want 137 and I want you to convert that to BCD, you just have three separate groups. You have your 1, you have your 3, and you have your 7. Very easy to do. There's your 1, there's your 3, and there's your 7 in terms of BCD. I have two examples here on page 29. Make sure you look over examples 2.8 and 2.9 and make sure you understand the solutions. It's very important. The next code we're going to look at is going to be the gray code. This is on page 30. On page 30, we're going to talk about the gray code. It's an unweighted code which means there's not power of twos assigned to the bit positions. It's not sequential in terms of counting. You'll see that in a minute. In order to reduce the likelihood of a digital circuitry misinterpreting a changing input, we use a gray code. If, if you take a look, and let's say this works for linear positioning or it works for angular positioning, but let's take a, a posi angular position as we go through you know, zero degrees. 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, and so forth. As we change those different positions, we want a device to be able to give us a digital output. Give us, give us an output that we can use in a digital system. In, in other words, for zero degrees, we want to, we'd want to show a, a position as zero. In the next 10 degrees, we'd want to put out another digital sequence that we would be able to interpret as 10 degrees. When we go to 20 degrees, we'd want another digital. Well, that, that's, that digital code is more applicable in the system if it's a J code, if it's, if it's a, uh, a gray code. If you take a look here, I show you straight binary code here on page 30. It goes 0, 0, 0 through 1, 1, 1. That's a counting sequence, straight binary, 0, 1, there's a 2, there's the 3, there's a 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now, if we were using this as zero degrees, and we were using this, tell us it's going to be uh, 
10 degrees and this was going to represent 20 degrees. Notice as we go from this position to this position, the least significant bit goes from a 1 to a 0. And the next bit goes from a 0 to 1. That's a 2-bit change. There's more chance for error there. Um, look here. If we go from 3 to 4, if this was like uh, see, 0 degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, we went from 30 degrees to 40 degrees, and we used, this would tell us it's 30 degrees, and this would tell us it's 40. As we took that positioning uh, input, output, that positioning output into our device that's going to that's gonna act on that, we have three bit changes there. This one goes to a zero, this one goes to a zero, and this zero goes to a one. A lot of chance for error there. But take a look if we have a gray code. This gray code, there's no counting sequence to it if you look at it here. But, there, but look what happens. When you go from here, this is zero degrees, this is 10 degrees, this is 10 degrees, this is 20 degrees, this is 20 degrees, this is 30 degrees. Only one bit change is in the sequence as you go between these gray codes. But you don't know how to go from here to here yet. You will. But this is a gray code right here. Notice it's not sequential. Let's count. This is a 0. There's a 1. There's a 3. There's a 2. There's a 6. There's a 7. There's back to a 5. And then down we go to 4. There's no counting to this. The only significance of the gray code is only one bit changes at a time. If you take a look here on page 31, I'll show you how to go from binary to gray conversion. Real easy to do. You, you first take the most significant bit. It's always the same. And second, uh, what you do is you start from left to right, and you add each pair of bits to get the next gray code, and you just discard the carries. So here's a binary number, and what we're going to do is we're going to convert it to gray. Well, how do you do that? Well, you take the first digit and you bring it down. It's the same. Then you add the 1 and the 0, you get a 1. You add the 0 and a 1, you get a 1. You add a 1 and a 1, you get a 0, and you're discarding the carry there. And you add a 1 and a 0, and you get a 1. And there's your gray code equivalent. You're probably wondering, well, what does he mean? You got a 1 and a 0, and you get a 1. And a 0 and a 1, you get a 1. And a 1 and a 1, you get a 0. Well, all that's saying is this. When you're adding binary numbers up, and you take a, a, a 0, and you add a 1 to it, when you add that up, you're going to get a 1. Uh, let's form a whole nibble here, but we're only we only care about th this these these digits here. You take a zero and you add a one, you're going to get a one. Or if you take a one here and a zero here, you're going to get a one. But what if you have a one and you're adding it to a one? Well, one plus one is two in base ten. Well, it should be the same. It should be two in base two. Well, it is. A 1 and a 0 gives you a 0, and you carry the 1 up to here, and you add these three up, and you get a 1, and there's your 2. So a 1 and a 0, or a 0 and a 1 gives you a 1, and a 1 and a 1 gives you a 0. We're just ignoring this carry when we use the gray code equivalent, uh, when we come up with the gray code equivalent. Let's, let's do the next example. I have an example here on page number 31. Let's see if you can work that one out. Go ahead and try it once. It's a 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. That's base 2. That's a binary number. And we want to convert that to a gray code. Well, you bring the 0 down. The first digit's always the same. Then you add, starting left, you add these two up, you get a 1. You add these two up, you get a 1. You add these two up, you get a 1. And a 1 and a 1 gives you a 0. There's your gray code equivalent. Applications of the gray code, I told you it's, it's, uh, it's used a lot in positioning encoders. Devices, um, whether they're linear or angular, makes no difference. It's a device that's going to tell you the position in a digital, sequ uh, a digital representation of a position of, of some object. Um, they give you a nice, ex nice example in the book. It's a 3-bit, 8 position. 3 bits will give you 8 possible states, you know. 2 to the 3rd is 8. Um, so it's a 3-bit, 8-position shaft encoder. If you look on page 45, I want you to look that over. Very important to understand that. A summary here of numeric codes on page number um, 32. Uh, look over examples 210, 211, 212, and 214 on pages 46 through 47 for the exam.
And then we're going to talk about the American Code for uh, Information Interchange. The acronym for it is an ASCII. -I. It's called ASCII. It's called the ASCII code. The ASCII code is a seven bit code. And uh, what I want to do is show you here some examples, then we'll look at these examples here. But let's take a look at page number 34. It's a lot more information than, uh, than you need. But every single symbol in the English language has a ASCII equivalent. Um, I don't care if we're talking about a period. I don't care if we're talking about a question mark or an asterisk, the number one, an A, a capital A, a small A. If you look at this table right here, for instance, if we want to represent the number or the letter, uh, let's say a capital T, a capital T here is a, they show you the, the ASCII code in decimal and hex and octal and HTML, but all I care about is the hex. That's all you're going to be responsible for is the hex column. A capital T is a 54. So a capital T is equal to a 54 in hex which is a 5 and a 4. Notice what we're going to do. It's a 7-bit code. It's just a 7-bit code. So I'm going to show it as a complete byte with 8 bits. So we're always going to make the most significant bit here, the leftmost bit, a 0. Um, what if we wanted to put in a, um, a plus sign? The plus sign, if you look, is a 2-baker. Um, it's a 2 baker. It's a two. Look on the table, a two baker. So if you want to show a plus sign and you want to represent it digitally with ASCII, it's a two. The, mo most, the leftmost bits is always a zero. There's your two and your baker. That right there is the ASCII code for a, uh, for a plus sign. Even the space. If you look here for a space, even the space has a hex. If you're sending a space to a printer, you want it to put a space between words, for instance, you'd send out a, a 20. So you'd send out a hex 20, a space. And hex is a 20, which is a 2 and a 0. That's the ASCII code for a space. On, uh, let's see, there's, there's some homework problems that I, uh, I want you to look over. There's a couple homework problems that have to do with uh, ASCII, converting to ASCII. And so make sure you look them over. It's on page, I think back on page 33, there's some examples too I told you about. Um, we want to look at the uh, Make sure you understand the examples 216 and the review question example down at the bottom of page 33. These are real important examples. You have to know them for the exam. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about parity real quick. Parity is a method for detecting errors when you're sending data from one point to another point. Parity can, be, can detect for errors but can't correct for them. There is, there's different codes, there's different ways of, of not actually, of actually detecting an error and correcting it. It's called hamming codes. Um, there's different methods to do that, but we're not concerned about correcting codes. I just want to show you how we can use parity as a method to detect errors in a transmission. In order to detect an error in a parity bit, we must first generate um, either an odd or an even parity bit. An even parity bit is generates a parity bit that so that the total number of ones in the data is even. And uh, an odd parity, if you're generating with odd parity, it generates a parity bit so the total number of uh, of ones in the data is an odd number. So before I show you these examples here on page 35, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, for instance, the capital T. Capital T, we know in ASCII, we already did that before. Let's look back at the table and see what the capital T was. Capital T was a uh, 54, which is a 50, 5, and a 4. There's your 5, 4. 
notice that we put a zero here all the time. But if we're going to send that, let's say, with uh, with even parity, what if we wanted to transmit that? We wanted to send it with even parity. Well, to send that with even parity, you just want to make sure the total number of ones are even. The total number of ones now. One, two, three. So we only have three ones there. So we wanted to make we want to make them even numbers, so we'd have to add a one. So to generate even parity, we have to put a one, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. The total number of ones is a one, two, three, four. So the parity bit would be a one. If we wanted to send the capital T with odd parity, well we already have an odd number of ones. One, two, three, there's three of them. So the parity bit would be a zero. So the transmission would look exactly the way it, it did in the ASCII code. You'd, this would be an odd transmission. The parity bit would be odd, and the parity bit would be even. The, the odd parity bit isn't always a zero, and the even parity bit isn't always a one. You have to count the total number of ones. So if you take a look here, um, a capital T with an odd parity bit, and we already worked on that, um, is a 54 with the odd parity. With the even parity, notice we got the... One one zero one zero one zero zero. So if if I asked you to give me the even parity complete even parity bit or or byte, um, this is a delta four. It's a little simpler to refer to this as a delta, and that is a four. If we wanted to know what the transmission would be with odd parity in hex, it's a fifty-four. There's your five, and there's your four. If you take a look here, um, the parity bit can be placed at the beginning or it can be placed at the end of the byte. It makes makes no difference, but you know we're always going to place it at the beginning. On page number 56, um, notice that we have examples, uh, capital H with an odd parity bit. Make sure you can do that. Uh, capital H with an even parity bit, a small h with an even parity, percent symbol with an odd parity. Look over the application examples, 2-3, 2-4, 2-5, 2-6. Um, very important on pages 54 through 56 and this example here 217 um, this p page 36 of my lecture notes make sure you can do it this is all going to be on the first exam that concludes the lecture